И мы продолжаем. У меня вопрос. А ты вот and other popular, popular languages. Это ты просто не хотел писать PHP? Да, кстати. Да. Алло. Просто. Нет, PHP я навык забыл про него на самом деле. Окей. Да, Сергей Бойков. So. Okay, so <coughs> hi everybody. Uh, I'm Sergey Boyko. I'm work as uh, <coughs> lead engineer in Railsware company, and today we're gonna discuss uh, runtime models of different popular languages, but not PHP. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> so um, uh, the first question is why runtime model? Why it's, uh, this subject is so important? Uh, during our daily work, we need to make some technical choices. Not always Rails is the best option for our tasks. And we need to make decisions. And uh, having this knowledge, we can always choose best option for our goals. So <clears throat> uh, today we discuss next uh, items. Uh, first of all, we will discuss two key factors of uh, performance factor like CPU bound tasks and IO bound tasks. We'll uh, discuss key runtime components like bare performance, parallelism, memory management, IO mode and concurrency. And also we will see how those parts will affect throughput, uh, maximal number of available connections we can handle and uh, uh, responsiveness. So let's start from CPU bound. And uh, CPU bound, it's actually a time we need to mm, complete task and which is determined by the speed of our CPU. Uh, there are three key components like bare performance, parallelism, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Uh, parallelism and memory management which de <coughs> defines uh, our performance. And uh, there are plenty of our usual examples, like when we compile assets, compile Ruby, or uh, even when we create active record objects, uh, those uh, tasks uh, are defined by the speed of CPU. Uh, usually when we <coughs> talk about, uh, so the first component is bare performance. And uh, bare performance is uh, very simple. The closer we <coughs> are to CPU, the faster we are. So uh, we have usually, we can separate languages on two big groups, like statically typed and dynamic languages. And statically typed usually uh, is, uh, can be very, <coughs> very well compiled down to bare metal. Thus, thus they perform much better than dynamic languages. Uh, statically typed uh, usually uh, compiled in two modes, uh, classic mode ahead of time, like C, C++, Rust, and many others. And uh, another popular mode is just-in-time compilation, uh, when runtime starts not uh, with uh, pre-compiled code, but uh, it detects uh, uh, on the go what to compile to make uh, performance optimization. Those modes are usually perform on the same base, but in practice ahead of time is uh, usually faster. Uh, dynamic languages can suffer like uh, with and pay high penalty for being dynamic and we can have like 10 times slower performance or even worse. And uh, when we have just-in-time compilation, uh, we can be like uh, two times slower in the best cases and JavaScript V8 is a good example of this. So uh, the next uh, uh, component is parallelism and parallelism is our ability to <coughs> uh, run tasks uh, in parallel and at the same moment and uh, for us it means that we can use all available CPU cores. Uh, and we have two groups, parallel and non-parallel. Uh, Ruby is non-parallel and Python and JavaScript and uh, like many other languages uh, have parallel uh, ability to use uh, parallelism and for example JRuby on GVM can run in parallel mode. Uh, and the last uh, piece, uh, last uh, important 
part is memory management. Uh, so <coughs> here we have two groups, uh, three groups. Uh, so first is non-garbage collecting runtimes like in C. Uh, it's manual memory management. Uh, we don't pay a performance penalty. The same for Rust and for C++ with such way of, of handling memory. Uh, but uh, when we use reference counting, uh, it, it has some overhead. Uh, uh, and uh, the worst case scenario is uh, tracing garbage collector, which is actually what uh, we have in most of the runtime at this moment. Mm. So we can expect like 10 performance penalty, but it can be even worse, especially when we have uh, higher uh, memory usage. Uh, that's this part we will <coughs> close CPU bound stuff and now we will discuss IO bound and uh, being Ruby developer IO bound is the most crucial part because web is all about uh, IO bound stuff so <coughs> IO bound defines how efficiently we can do sim simultaneous interactions with the outer world and um, here are three key components so uh, which IO mode we use uh, what is concurrency model and uh, memory management again. Uh, there are plenty of examples and we can see that mostly any stuff we do in Rails, like handling web requests, calling database, uh, calling Redis, uh, sending email, all these tasks are IO bound. Uh, so the first part, first component is IO mode. So, and we can run in um, blocking or non-blocking way. So the first way is uh, when we use synchronous or blocking IO. Uh, here we, when we interact with uh, the other side, uh, we will wait. So we will block and we will wait until other side will respond. Uh, on the contrary, in a synchronous mode, we don't wait. We just uh, say, okay, we blocked. Uh, we will switch to another task and we will uh, back to it again when other side will respond. Uh, we have like Ruby and Java usually use uh, synchronous way of handling uh, IO interactions. And for example, Node.js uses a synchronous way. Uh, I should mention that it's not like mandatory. Uh, in Ruby, we can also use asynchronous mode, but we will write more some code and we can actually emulate uh, event loop when we uh, use asynchronous stuff in Ruby. So uh, next uh, part is concurrency. Um, concurrency, it's uh, ability of application to run tasks virtually at the same time. And virtually means that they shouldn't be parallel, but uh, they, uh, the way we schedule CPU tasks uh, just creates this impression that everything runs in, in the same moment. And uh, we have three main models. So uh, it's blocking IO plus OS threads or processes. Uh, the second one, event loop, and the third one is uh, green threads. So <coughs> blocking IO plus OS threads, it's uh, probably the most popular uh, way, uh, which is used in many runtimes. And um, uh, how it works, uh, we write code, we blocks on any IO interaction, and when uh, and we unblock when interaction is ready to interact with us. So uh, the process that we write a simple sequential code, no callbacks hell, but <coughs> it's, uh, it has um, a lot of downsides. First of all, uh, uh, operation threads are expensive. Uh, we will use two megabytes of memory for stack. Um, Usually this module has a lot of issues with shared state because all threads uh, share the same state and um, uh, we need to use uh, a lot of synchronization primitives and thus we should uh, have very high quality third party libraries. Uh, this works for GVM and .NET, um, for, to some extent for C and C++, but it doesn't work for Ruby. Uh, we don't use usually in production this mode because uh, uh, 
Ruby libraries are not written usually in uh, to be in thread safe, so it's always uh, safer not to use this mode. Uh, but for example, Rust is a good uh, exception from those limits because uh, Rust type system uh, handles uh, synchronization stuff and shared memory stuff for us and it works uh, really well. Uh, also, mm, because we use operation system threads, we have limit like, uh, I saw only one good benchmark, it's quite outdated, but I still uh, guess it has some uh, um, it's uh, still uh, it's still actual for this moment. So uh, Apache server was benchmarked and it crashed uh, in at about five thousand concurrent threads. Um, uh, the variation of the same approach is that we use processes instead of threads, and <laughs> in this case. We use more memory because uh, process don't share uh, memory and uh, uh, and that's the main downside compared to threads. Uh, but pros uh, that we have isolated memory and there is no need to uh, uh, to synchronize memory access. Uh, so Unicorn used this uh, way to handle concurrency for us. Uh, also, Postgres for handling client connections and Apache has one of the modes which use the same model. Uh, event loop. So, uh, event loop was popularized by Node.js, but actually it's a very old uh, model which uh, was implemented in Python and in TCL way uh, many years before. Uh, and we have it for Ruby in event machine. It works uh, quite simple but uh, remarkably efficient. So <coughs> we have a um, stack of, uh, not stack, we have queue of events. Uh, it's like uh, callbacks uh, and we have executor which uh, pick up some item from the top and execute it. Uh, in turn, this uh, callback can schedule new callbacks and we, we close this loop. So callback goes into execution, schedules new stuff, and creates new stuff. And this is perennial process. Uh, so this module is very efficient. Uh, it uh, shares memory. It's uh, also memory safe. We don't need to synchronize stuff. We just, uh, we, we can have only one callback executor per moment, so there is no uh, issues with race conditions. Uh, and it also very high performant, so we can handle millions of connections. And for example, Nginx and Haproxy use the same idea and they can handle a huge amount of load. Uh, downside that we, uh, each callback should be limited in time. We can't write infinite loops in our callbacks. Also, mm, we can usually use only one uh, single thread for main loop, so only one CPU core. And uh, sometimes we can have very cumbersome code, but uh, in the latest versions of Node.js and uh, in actually in Python, uh, they have both uh, coroutines and uh, async await stuff, and now code looks like good sequential code, so that's very cool. Uh, my main, f my favorite uh, concurrency model uh, is green threads, and green threads uh, they they differ. They uh, similar to IO, uh, blocking IO plus OS threads, but in the same way, it's different implementation. So <clears throat> the idea is that instead of using operation system threads, we use uh, runtime implements its own scheduler. And uh, it creates threads by itself. And uh, uh, the first benefit is that we have very small memory footprint compared to kilobytes for Erlang and Go and two megabytes for native, uh, native threads. 
Uh, also, it has very cheap context switch because runtime knows what it does and it can make it very efficient. And um, this module uh, can be very high performance so we can handle like millions of connections. Uh, compared to event loop, uh, we have uh, much uh, we have much softer restriction of uh, maximum execution time. So there are some restrictions, but we can write infinite loops and stuff like this. It doesn't uh, block main loop, and uh, runtime can use all available CPU cores. So uh, we have three remarkable implementations. So it's Erlang and Elixir uh, virtual machine, Go, and Haskell. And uh, Haskell and Go share a very similar approach to synchronization. Like I said, uh, threads are uh, uh, hard to work because uh, we have um, we have we had we had uh, to use mute access, but now it's not the case. Uh, there are many other uh, good approaches, like in Erlang and Elixir, we have actor model and message passing, and uh, in Go it's a bit different, but still very similar. We have uh, Go routines and channels for synchronization, in, and it's a very simple code to uh, think about. Uh, the last part, uh, which uh, did, uh, which uh, impact uh, I.O. performance a great deal is uh, actually memory management. So uh, when we use tracing garbage collector, we have two big downsides. First, that due to garbage collector poses in execution, we can have uh, interrupt, uh, we can have random delays and hiccups. Uh, and uh, for example, it's a usual case for Ruby, for Java, for .NET. Uh, only two runtimes uh, cope efficiently with this issue. So it's Erlang and Elixir virtual machine and Go. They use different approaches, but they uh, they actually uh, manage to fix this issue. So they have this like soft real time uh, characteristic. And also, we can use non tracing garbage. Uh, collection runtimes like C, C++, Rust, and uh, what's funny is Perl 5. And uh, these runtimes don't have uh, this issue as well. Uh, the second even more, uh, more big downside is that um, memory management, uh, uh, I mean garbage collector, uh, puts a big uh, limit uh, uh, on uh, uh, on memory, we can efficiently manage. So, for example, uh, Go, can, Go and Java. Yeah, I saw numbers like 16 gigabytes. They can manage efficiently and collect garbage, uh, and that that means we are limited uh, by the num number of maximum connections. Uh, at this moment, I saw real proofs only for Erlang and Elixir. Uh, so WhatsApp team did it like four or five years ago. Uh, they, um, their instances have like more than 100 gigabytes of uh, memory and they handle like two million connections per node. Mm. Uh, for example, the same mm, benchmark was uh, run for Node.js. Uh, Node.js can uh, Accept uh, a couple of millions of connections, but runtime becomes unresponsible due to garbage collecting high pressure on garbage collecting size. And the uh, author of uh, Node.js stated that a good number of connections Node.js can work. It's like 10, 15 thousands of connections. So uh, that's funny, but actually memory management is like decisive factor for uh, handling huge amount of connections. Uh, I, I didn't check this, but because Perl 5 has only reference counting, it should also be able to handle big uh, memories. So the last topic is uh, we'll analyze what we have in Ruby now and what we will have in, in the future. So current, current performance profile is quite poor. It's dynamic. We don't have JIT yet, but it's work in progress, which is great and it's not parallel. Uh, current garbage collection 
uh, is uh, quite good. Uh, starting from 2.1, it's generational mark and sweep. It works really well. So that, that's, that's good. And also, but we have this downside that we have delays in execution, run, random GC poses. IO bound stuff currently is very not efficient. We can use only <coughs> blocking mode uh, with processes and uh, uh, and yeah, like use Unicorn. Uh, so we can be like five, ten, or even worse uh, times slower comparing to Node.js, Ireland, or Go. But there is new hope. We have guilds, uh, which is work in progress. Koichi Sasada suggested this idea. Uh, he blended like ideas from Rust, uh, Erlang, and uh, Go. And uh, the idea of guild is quite simple. Uh, actually, we can treat each guild like uh, Ruby 2.5 uh, runtime. So it has it, its own uh, set of threads and set of fibers, and guild has interpreter locks, so it can run only only one thread within one guild. But what's cool uh, that guilds uh, are, have separate; they don't have like global lock. We don't have here lock, so each guild can run in parallel, and thus we can get much better performance. So. Uh, like to better understand it, we can uh, treat guilds like uh, blocking IO plus threads. We don't have this hassle with mute access and other synchronization primitives because guilds don't share memory and they use s something akin to Go channels to syn for synchronization. Uh, so expected performance can be like three ten, 10 times faster. Also, one guy went to Japan conference and he, he told uh, me that uh, Ruby team is keen to deliver uh, guilds within one year. That's also great. We, we, if we uh, will get it, then it will be a much much better performance for all of us. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Those are all main components I described, but uh, we have plenty of other stuff which can greatly affect our performance uh, for CPU bound and IO bound tasks. For example, uh, what data structure you use. Uh, that was fun, but uh, I was uh, really caught by surprise when I saw benchmarks for Elixir when it uh, runs some task more fast than Go, and Elixir is not a uh, compiled language, and Go is very well compiled uh, down to bare metal. And uh, the secret sauce was that uh, Elixir use uh, immutable structures, and it shares a lot of co uh, memory. So that, that was the idea, and they don't do uh, concatenation. Like when you create, uh, Strings uh, in Go, you you would uh, do a lot of memory copying, but in uh, Erlang and Elixir, they just create a great a big list of uh, small chunks of strings, and they are mutable and they share it all the time, and they just put it in socket, and it's like really efficient. And on the contrary, like Haskell, despite it compiles uh, also very good to bare metal, it uses lazy evaluation model and uh, on many tasks it can be slower than GVM or um, .NET languages. So that's uh, actually it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And time to questions. Yes? Синхронность в Ruby, но в то же самое время есть вот этот Global Interpreter Log. Можем ли вообще говорить о существовании? Синхронность или асинхронность? Что-что? Синхронность или… Асинхронность, асинхронность, параллелизм, какой-то, ну вот, про всякие треды эти. Окей, ну асинхронность не имеет отношения к Global Interpreter Log, потому что асинхронность – это… 
она может быть как бы в рамках одного потока. То есть мы можем, ну, собственно, Node.js так и работает. Он просто есть главный main loop, и все работает асинхронно. В Ruby мы тоже можем использовать асинхронность. Есть event машина, есть возможность использовать, например, ну, самый простой вызов операционной системы Select, который дает возможность реализовать асинхронную, асинхронную работу. Но просто код намного тяжелее писать. В этом основная проблема. Ну и, и опять же, такой код можно писать, если, например, нам нужно делать много вызовов к какому-то внешнему веб-сервису. Веб например, нам нужно сделать 100 одновременных веб-запросов, тогда мы можем использовать такой подход. Но если нам нужно постоянно делать запросы к базе, выполнять какую-то логику, такое не сработает. Поэтому single thread не мешает асинхронности. Ну, это никак не связано. First of all, thank you for sharing all such information and insights about existing technologies. Uh, so my question was will be about uh, was uh, this data collected among different uh, sources of information or can you suggest some places where we can uh, read in more details about this difference and so on? Because some of things you mentioned, they are pretty familiar for me, but still a lot of information was new. It, it's interesting to go deeper in it and to understand it. Okay, so uh, if if you want to like go deeper, there is a, a really great book, uh, Linux kernel. I don't remember the author is very simple, low. So there is a second edition, and it greatly describes how it all works under the hood. So what is synchronous calls on the operation system level, how threads scheduling works, and stuff like this, and uh, having this part, you will understand how any runtime works under the hood. But like when we take um, runtime specific information, it's there are no like si some shared stuff. I usually cherry picked uh, different articles and check how it works. So that's not stuff you can find in one in one place. Um, Linux, Linux kernel. I can check again. There is after low, and you will find easily by author name. So Linux kernel and low, and I guess it will be first. Uh. Yes. Окей, okay. ну я имею в виду то, что, э, ну, может он есть, но как бы он еще не включен, правильно я помню? А по дефолту он не включен, но это не означает, что его нет. Окей, okay. нет, ну, согласен. Второй момент, uh, MRI, uh, трейдинговая модель, насколько я помню, MRI использует GreenPass как раз. Нет. Э, нет, хорошо, это, это хороший вопрос, давайте вернемся к нему, то есть, окей, <coughs> okay. I will speak in English, so, the question was about the uh, threading model of MRI and uh, uh, the, the guy uh, said that Ruby used green threads. So uh, Ruby used to use uh, green threads model until 1.9, but uh, it dumped it because implementation was very inefficient and also it used, like for synchronization, it uses mutexes and all this crappy stuff. So there, there were no performance gains, and uh, also there was uh, an issue that, uh, for writing code which interacts with C programs. So for example, if you have na native OS uh, threads, you, you can easily uh, run several threads and use in one thread some C program, and it will not block main, main loop. But uh, when you have green threads, and that's what you, uh, Ruby used to have, and it, it would work inefficiently. Also, Java ha had the green sets, but again, it was uh, used mutex for, um, for synchronization, and it was dumped uh, before Java 2.0.
Thank you.